Well, look who we have. We were talking about it earlier and wouldn't it be wonderful to see one of these male lions walking out of the mist towards us. Now, he's not walking towards us, he's walking away from us, but at least it is one of the Birmingham boys and he's on Juma and he's coming north into Juma. So it means that we should be able to follow him for quite some time. Now, interestingly enough, this is the first time that I've seen tracks or even sort of seen any sign of the lions on this particular area. We're right on Ledwood Road, so we're on the eastern side of Twin Dams and normally they go towards Twin Dams and head that way so interesting that he's walking on this side and I don't know who it is yet because all I've seen is tail and his backside and so I'm going to try and find a way to get around him at some point that we can actually identify who exactly this is I know it's just one of the Birmingham boys but I have no idea which one what is interesting is the size of the mane. He's got a massive mane and you can see it's even starting to grow down onto his belly. These Birmingham boys are starting to get very, very big now. And it's interesting to see just how big they're going and also how dark they're getting. Who are you, boy? You're like the mystery lion at this stage because we can't see your face and you don't want to turn around for us. Now, hopefully there'll be a gap here somewhere where I can get around. So, Kirk, you're wondering if a mist would muffle a lion's roar. Well, the air is denser, and so therefore it's not going to carry as far as we would normally hear when it is um, just a cool, clear morning. But it would still be able to carry a fair distance. It's not going to muffle it nearly as much as you would think. It's just the air becomes a little bit denser, and so it just doesn't carry quite as far. But if you're next to this male lion and he lets out a roar, you're certainly going to know all about it. Right. Are you going to stop for us and actually let us see you for a second? Now, there is an opening coming up here, so I think what I'm going to try and do is I'm going to try and see if I can't get round him and get in front of where he is. Let's go quickly, Ferg. So, sorry, this is going to be a bit of a Ferrari off-roading experience because I want to just try and get ahead of our beautiful Birmingham boy so that we can actually see his face and not his bum all the time. Hopefully through here should be good. He's making it difficult because he's striding about. Careful Ferg, this is going to be a bit tight in here. Hopefully, if we can just punch through here, then I should be ahead of him, and then I can get around. There we go. Right, now, interestingly, there's a kudu in front of us, and a Birmingham boy is walking straight down the road. So I wonder if this kudu is going to see him. I'm sure it is, because he's just striding. There we go. Now, it looks like either Neno or Nsuku, one of the two of them, I can't see now. Yeah, I'm just, hold on Ferg, I'm just going to try and get into a position where I can reverse with him. Now he's spotted the kudu, so he's going off the road. You see, he's now going into the thicket a little bit. But there we go, I can't see exactly if it's Neno and Suku, because I can't see the equal sign over the nose if it would be Nena. So it might be in Suku. Difficult to say. But he's definitely cut into the bush now, and the kudu is right behind us here. And I wonder if he's not seen this kudu. Let's have a look. Oh no, don't go that way. You're going the wrong way now. Okay, let's try and keep up with him because otherwise we're going to lose him in this thicket. Has the kudu stayed there? Yes, the kudu stayed there. It looks like the kudu might have seen him. I haven't heard an alarm call yet, but the kudu probably will start barking shortly. There you can see the kudu is watching very intently. It's seen some sort of movement. Oh, kudu's just running. The lion's that close that the kudu's not going to even bark. It's just going to try and get out of there. No, our male lion is just sitting and actually watching. I can just see his legs through the thickets. Let's go try and see if we can't catch up with him quickly, Ferg. So, we're trying to see if we can't reverse with him because he's now moving just parallel with us at the moment so I'm going to try and just get in here because it's going to be nice and open and we're going to be able to get a really good view of this male as he comes through now hopefully he decides not to take this route and continues back on the road because if he goes through where he is now we're not going to be able to stay with him it's incredibly thick inside here and it's not going to be easy at all 
which here he is, he's going to just come out right out into the open. And isn't that a magnificent sight in that mist? A big male lion, and he is looking amazing. These Birmingham boys are starting to get much, much larger now. Very cool. So, Oscar, you want to know how many male lions are there? Well, in terms of the world, I'm not very sure how many male lions there would be. But here in the northern Sabi Sands, where we operate, we've got the four Birmingham males that we see. And there used to be two Matimbas. We haven't seen them in a very long time. And they tend to sort of hang out now in the Manuleti. Listen. It's a kudu that's barking. It sounds like a dog, doesn't it? starting to roar he let out a small little sort of contact call but look at him disappearing into the mist right so we get the four Birmingham boys the two Matimbas they used to be the Solatis now I think I'm not sure look he's chasing he's running after the kudu do you see that let's try and get ahead quickly it seems like he's trying to chase the kudu it's no, just trying his luck because they're some baby kudus there but let's quickly try and catch up. He's, up there. He's just decided to run after them. So I don't know if it's just an opportunistic try quickly or if it was a sort of thing that he was going to use this thicket to his advantage. But it seems like he just took off after them. Ah, oh, there he is there. Now the Kudus must have gotten away because he's looking very forlorn as he sits here. Now I'm just going to try and get through. That was up. I didn't expect him to start running like that. Where, where has he gone? Has he gone down? Oh no, this is not ideal where he's going. This is going to be a very, very, very thick, very rough experience. So I do apologize, Ferg. Now we're going to try and negotiate this horrible thicket. And while we do that, let's get across to Byron and see how he's doing with Tingana.